my name is Tamara Natalie Madden. I was born in Jamaica, West Indies. I came to America at a young age. I lived in um, Wisconsin for some time. Um, always have been an artist, always been a, a creative soul. Grew up around um, my uncles who are Rastafarians and creative souls. A lover of all things um, creative. I'm a writer, I'm an artist, and I don't sing, but you know, I do a lot of things, you know, photography and whatnot. I started uh, pursuing art uh, full-time in 2001 um, after a major illness affected my life. I had a kidney transplant and my brother um, gave me a kidney. I believe in organ donation. I just wanted to say that. I started uh, pursuing art full-time in 2001 and I've been at it ever since. Art has always been in me. It was always my way of expressing my feelings, my anger, my frustration. I would write or I would draw whenever things were, were wrong or right in my life. Um, so when I became ill, it was the first thing I ran back to. It was the only thing I thought that would help me to um, escape from the things I was dealing with. It takes you away mentally. Well, my work has evolved over time. I was creating um, pieces that were um, reminding me of my experience growing up in Jamaica, of the hardworking farmers in Jamaica, of the everyday people um, that I was surrounded by. For a time, you know, that was great. I, it was an emotional, um, uh, work for me. I realized that a lot of, a lot of people, I, hear, I live in America, and a lot of people did not want to be reminded of the struggle, of the black struggle. Um, they don't want to see sharecroppers. They don't want to see such and such. They wanted to, they have built their careers, they're professionals now, and they wanted to see art that represented them at where they are now in their careers. And I, you know, felt like, wow, you know, I didn't know this was, they were so disconnected from this, even though it was something I was connected to. But I felt like those people needed to, to be seen. They had a voice. Um, they were overlooked all the time, and I thought that I would present them in a different manner, my representation of their internal royalty, of their internal beauty. So they're dressed in, in, in beautiful clothing, in rich fabrics, and they're wearing these whimsical crowns, and they are, they are representative of that beautiful personality that somebody might have. Um, there are pictures of girls, black girls, who when people see them, they say, oh, you're so black. I was that girl. And so now when you see this black girl with that long neck and that big nose and those big lips, you're like, wow, she is beautiful. Uh, but you wouldn't have noticed that before. And so that's what my work is about. It's about heightening black people, uh, putting us where we really need to be. It's like I'm trying to pull out that soul of that person. Now we all judge each other. You know, we all make assumptions about people based on what we see. But that's not always the case, you know. But I, I but you know, and people judge people based on what they wear and if they, you know, if they, their hair is a certain way or whatever. But I, I just want the work to somehow be able to access the image is sort of an access to the soul of the person, if that makes sense, you know. And that's really what I'm trying to do with the work. And it's probably a more personal thing. I don't know if everybody that views it will get that, but that's what I'm attempting to do. Ultimately, trying to remind people, and probably myself, it's a constant reminder of who I am. I was a little black girl growing up in Jamaica. My complexion was some completely different when I was living in Jamaica. I was told I was black and ugly. I was called names because of my complexion. And I just want to remind myself, never forget where you came from, who you are. A black art in America um, is, is um, a premier website for African American artists and artists of the diaspora. And they decided to put to, uh, together a book to commemorate um, all of the wonderful work that Oprah Winfrey has done over time um, and to present to her for her birthday, which is January 29th, 2011. And they were uh, looking for artists to be involved in the book, to participate, and I was chosen to do the cover of the book. Definitely an honor uh, for me. So, And they chose one of my pastel pieces. Now, pastel is not my um, usual medium. I work with acrylics and mixed media. But I was dabbling in pastel again after about a 10-year hiatus, and I created this piece called Sunflower. And Sunflower is that black girl. She is that black girl with the black skin and the long neck and the full nose and the full lips. She is 
heightened by wearing a crown that's shaped like a sunflower. It's a very simple piece. I and mean, she has a bird on her shoulder. All of my pieces have birds in them. The birds are representative of my uh, struggle with illness and my survival from illness, my freedom now to be who I am. So the piece was chosen, and I'm exceptionally, you know, I'm honored. I'm, I'm honored. They didn't have to choose me, but I'm really grateful. I, I watched The Secret before Oprah found out about The Secret. Okay, maybe she'd find out already, but <laughs> I had actually gotten a copy of it before I saw it on Oprah's show. And, you know, it made its big debut. You know, I even had a secret party with a couple of my friends at the house, you know. And one of the things I told you to do in The Secret was to do a vision board, which is a board, just pictures, cut out pictures from magazines that basically of things you want to achieve in your life and whatever, whatever. And a couple of people on the video said that they had gotten the house they desired and gotten the car, gotten the woman, whatever. And so I said, well, let me do a vision board. And my vision board was scarce. Um, I just had Jamaica on it an American passport and a uh, picture of Oprah holding a book uh, in her hand, smiling. And she was holding a book with my image on the cover. You know, at the time it was a different book, but nonetheless, Oprah was holding a book. And so it is a little odd <laughs> uh, that now, three years later, Oprah is going to be holding a book with my image on the cover. So I, I guess that means the secret works. <laughs> For me, you know, to have Oprah Winfrey see any of my images or hold something I created in her hand is, is absolutely fascinating. You know, in many ways, Oprah is a representation of every, you know, every black girl who's ever struggled or had a hard time believing in themselves. She's a dark girl. She, she had to fight for, you know, for her place in this world. And um, she made it. I think Oprah is diligent, she's persistent, she has drive, she has passion. I, you know, my life in the last 10 years has been, uh, and I'm very aware, I have progressed significantly in the last 10 years creatively. Many people who saw my work 10 years ago told me that I should stop. I should stop painting because uh, you suck, you know. I've heard that a million times and um, haven't had a lot of the support, but to, to see how far I've come in the last 10 years is, is fascinating. Simply, the reason why I'm here is because I take criticism and I take critique. And when you criticize me, it makes me work that much harder. And I decided that nobody's going to tell me what I can't or can't do, what I can't or can't achieve. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to push myself. I'm, I'm going to make it. And I, and I do have a lot of faith, and I actually do believe in the possibilities. I really, really believe that anything you put your mind to, you can achieve. And when I became ill and laid on my deathbed, literally laid on my deathbed, I decided once I survived that I was not going to waste my life doing something that I don't love. I wasn't going to waste my life working a regular job and be miserable. I was going to do what God wanted me to do and I was going to paint. I was going to paint my heart out and, and I had to get better. And in my life, I've realized that people have been brought into my life to assist me on this journey and they're still being brought into my life to assist me on this journey. And it's not been an easy journey. It's been, a journey, it's been sacrifice after sacrifice, but I'm making it. And I think that's exactly what Oprah represents, the sacrifice, the push, the drive, the not giving up, the believing in possibilities, the knowing that you can get there if you keep, if you keep moving forward. And that's why I respect the woman so much. You know, I respect you, Oprah. I respect you as a human being, because not everybody has that diligence, not everybody has that drive, not everybody has that push. Some people make excuses all the time about what they can't and can't do, can and can't do, and they haven't even gone through hardly anything. And there's no excuse for wasting your life. You only get one chance. So I, I, I think that's what Oprah, rep what, I know that's what Oprah represents to me. She is, she is that face that looks like mine. She has that black skin, those full lips. She pushed past all of the naysayers. And look at where she is. People worship her, you know. Um, I don't necessarily need anybody to worship me, Oprah, but, you know, I just want to be, um, be able to say, when I look back at my life, when I'm 60, 70, 80, I accomplished something. And um, that's what it's all about.
You know, I left something on this earth. I did something positive. So.